Welcome to St Jude's for this pre-recorded service for Candlemas. Today, February the 2nd, is Candlemas, named for the tradition of people bringing their candles, um, which were their main and possibly their only source of light after dark, into church to have them blessed for use throughout the year. So whenever they lit a candle, they'd be reminded of the light of Jesus in the darkness of the world. Candle Mass these days is often called the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it remembers the occasion reported in Luke's Gospel when the 40-day-old Jesus was brought, as tradition demanded, to the Temple in Jerusalem, a sort of Jewish equivalent of infant baptism giving thanks for a child, dedicating them to God and purifying the mother after childbirth. When the baby Jesus was brought in, he and his parents were accosted by a couple of elderly prophets, Simeon and Anna, who somehow recognised that this child was what they had been waiting for all their lives. And old Simeon said this child would be a light to the nations, literally to the Gentiles, the non-Jews and the glory of his people, Israel. He was going to fulfill all that God's people had been chosen to do, to reveal God to the world. Old Simeon's declaring of Jesus as a light to the world led, I guess, to the association with candles. So this becomes a festival of light. In some places, like Ripon Cathedral, they light as many candles as they can muster for candles. Um, I'm guessing that won't be happening much this year as we struggle in a different sort of darkness. But that makes a celebration of the light of Christ all the more appropriate. The darker the world becomes, the more we need the light in the darkness. The more we need to light candles in our hearts. We're going to begin this service by singing. Longing for light, we wait in darkness.
Christ is a light in the darkness of this world. We light more lights to remember God, the Holy Trinity, the Father who lit the world, the Son who brought that light into the world in the way we could see, and the Holy Spirit who shared that light with us and with all of Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 2. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and his glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be a light to us, Lord Jesus. For Simeon and Anna, they had seen hope for the world. They knew they wouldn't live to see it themselves, 
but it was enough for them. We live in a sort of darkness in this pandemic. We see hope in a vaccine, in people becoming immune and being able to return to some sort of normality. But at the moment, we are still in darkness. At this time of year, we watch as the world is gradually becoming lighter, slowly, painfully slowly, but still lighter. We see the bulbs starting to sprout, the catkins appearing on the trees, the, bud, the buds swelling. Occasionally, on a slightly milder day, a bird lets off a spring-like song, but it is still winter. Of course, there are other darknesses as well. People are not only sad in the pandemic. What is your darkness at the moment? In our darkness, Christ is a light, lit precisely in the darkness, where it is needed most. He's not a magic spell to make it all go away. He is not an easy light switch connected to a brilliant arc light. He is more like a candle. Bringing light to the world won't be easy. Mary learns that this light for the world will involve a sword piercing her soul. But this candle will light other candles, which will light others, and then still more, and the light will grow. In our darkness, will we carry that light of Jesus with us to help us see our way? To light the way for others? Will we let him shine in our hearts so that together we might be a light to the nations, shining with his light, growing ever brighter to the full light of day? If you have candles at home, I invite you to light them as I light our candles here. And as we light them, may we pray for Jesus' light in the darkness of this world and in our lives, and endeavour to be lights that light other lights, that light other lights, to bring light to our world.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray for the church that we may shine the light of Jesus. We pray for the world to be healed from this pandemic and all other forms of darkness, war, poverty, injustice, climate change. Shine as a light in this world and wherever, Lord, we see darkness, a light that is not light, give us grace to share our light. Pray for anyone we know in need of our prayers. Like Simeon, may I grow old in hope and in wonder. Like Anna, May I, may I be in love with you all my days. May I be open to truth, open to surprises. May I let your spirit into my life. May I let your justice change my behaviour. May I live in the brightness of your joy. Amen. Star maker God, lightener of the world, Bless us and warm us into light and loving. Bring us to the light of Jesus, at the length, all the length and breadth of our nights and days. You have found me, Lord. I have seen you. Daily I know you, cherishing you. Kindle and draw me into the light of your loving every night and day of my journey home. As the candle, so my light. Flickering, burning, changing, a light and warm with a light which is you. Amen. In the dark days, under ra rain heavy clouds, among broken branches, on sodden earth, the snowdrops light their candles. A flame that cannot be put out by darkness or gales of doubt. In the salt wind, rooks buckle like broken umbrellas as the bare trees heave a great sigh. The snowdrops tremble, but their flame cannot be put out by darkness or gales or doubt. Perfect as though carved in green-veined marble, like pulsing through tissue, delicate as the eyelids of a sleeping child, curved like small fingers holding on, their flame is steadfast. It is full of hope and new beginnings. Darkness or gales of doubt cannot put it out. Him, song, Christ is the world's light, he and none other. Let's make this song of prayer that there may be glory in the world. The glory of God will shine in our lives and in the world through Christ and through the light that he passes on to us.
May Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promise and obey his will and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. May the light of Christ shine in your hearts in this darkness and all our days through to the, through to the glory of God which will fill this world as the waters cover the sea.